intelligencesquared.com. Um, you can all hear me, yes, I'm sure you can. Um, David and I are going to talk for about 45 minutes, and then I'm going to open this up for questions. I, I've just written a little introduction um, about David and his work. I'm sure probably everybody here in the audience is familiar with um, the highlights of it, but just in case you're not, um, so David Grossman was born in Jerusalem in 1953. His mother was born in Mandate Four. Palace. <laughs> Come on, it's a year. Yeah, uh, yeah, right. That's, um, wow. Um, <laughs> his mother was born in Mandate, Palestine, yes. yes. His father emigrated from Poland with his widowed mother at the age of nine in the 1930s, yes. Okay, I hope I'm on firmer ground here. Um, David grew up in a neighborhood of Holocaust survivors, or those who had escaped before the war, from the lands known as Over There. In, and his novel, See Under Love, first published in Hebrew in 1986, takes us into the mind of a sensitive young boy overhearing the adult conversations about the terrifying and possibly mythical monster, the Nazi beast. Um, David's father worked first as a bus driver, and then as a librarian, and it was the gift of growing up in a library that formed David's awareness of literature and language, particularly the stories of, of the Yiddish writer Sholem Aleichem. But I know that as a child he must have read very widely because he told me of his first reading of Virginia Woolf's To the Lighthouse, when he was so traumatized by the death of Mrs. Ramsey, he ran away to weep in a nearby wadi. You told me this? You don't remember? Yeah, not okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, in 1971, he began his mandatory national service serving in army intelligence. He's a former child actor and child radio star. You won a quiz, am I right? Yeah, um, about Shalom Aleichem. Yes, yeah. but they wouldn't give you the prize because you were a child. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he went on to study philosophy and theater at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem and became a newsreader on Kol Israel, the National Broadcasting Service, where he once said, I, I've gone terribly, I'm sort of really, you know, thin ice here, that they managed to get through more major domestic news items in one broadcast that the Netherlands managed in a year. In 1988, he was sacked for reading out a banned news item that the Palestinian leadership had declared both its own state and Israel's right to exist. He published The Yellow Wind, based on several weeks traveling through the occupied territories, talking to Palestinians, and finding human stories of refugees and the displaced, little different to that of his own immigrant grandparents. I think this book was dismissed by politicians at the time as the fantasies of a novelist, and not long after that, the First Intifada broke out. Um, because he's been an outspoken critic of the Israeli government, readers have often been more interested in his writings of dissent, which have made him enemies amongst the Israeli right and its supporters abroad, and amongst those anti-Zionists for whom his commitment to a two-state solution and a national home for the Jewish people is a heresy. Like all great liberal voices, he occupies the nuanced middle ground rather than the megaphone rhetoric of the righteous. In 2006, David's son, Yuri, a tank commander in Lebanon, was killed in the closing hour of the war, hours of the war. At his funeral, David said, we have to guard ourselves from might and simplistic thinking, from the corruption that is in cynicism, from the pollution of the heart and the ill treatment of humans, which are the biggest curse of those living in a disastrous region like ours. When I think of him as a novelist, what always comes to mind is the remark of one character, Avram, in his latest novel, To the End of the Land, which we're going to talk about. Avram is a prisoner of war in Egypt after the Yom Kippur War, and he observes a pe fellow POW crying out for jealousy for his girlfriend and feels reverence for a man who could find such dedication to his own private pain, which had nothing to do with the Egyptians and their tortures. 
private pain, the nuance of feeling, the right of the individual to his or, own, in, his or her own intimacy and idiosyncrasy is the essence of his work. To the End of the Land is a novel literally about the land, the land of Israel. Um, Aura is running away from home because her beloved son has just been released from army service, but with a new war breaking out, he's offered to do another 28 days of reserve duty. She's so terrified that she decides that if she runs away from home and is not there to hear the news that he has been killed in action, then it can't be delivered, and so it won't have happened. So she sets off on a hiking trip with an Orfair, Orfair, an old boyfriend from many years ago. And... With Avram. Sorry? What? With, with Avram. With Avram, sorry. Yeah, yeah. With, oh, God, I'm sorry. With Avram, I do apologize. Um, when they were both in the isolation ward of a Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv hospital during the Six-Day War, abandoned by the nurses, and it was while writing this novel that he received the news that his son Yuri had been killed. But I want to talk about the genesis of that novel. I want to talk about where that novel started in your own mind all those years ago.